Alright guys, welcome back to the GSL up and down matches. We've got Keen versus Yu-Gi-Oh! Our only non pro loss match of the day. Yeah, and uh, it's going to be a good one. We're going to get to see a ZVT on Taldor and Malter, a nice big map. Hopefully we'll get to see a nice, long, fulfilling macro game, Wolf. Yeah, we will. I'm excited, man. We found out something interesting over the break, didn't we? Well, you know, interesting, um, uh, interesting fact. Well, I'll have to tell you guys a story once we're in game. It's a longer story, and the countdown is starting. Oh, all right then. But I tried to set you up so nicely. I know you did. You just slammed the basketball I'm sorry, just, right down. I was about to dunk it. I know, man. I'm like that really good defender. Someone in the crowd had a sign that said "brick." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. And one. All right, well, our map is Taldarim Altar. It's loaded. Keen versus Yu-Gi-Oh. Keen already down a game. Can he bring himself to 1-1 one -one here? Let's find out. Down at the bottom right part of the map is a player that's down one game in today's up and down group. From the team MVP in the red, he is MVP King. Some keen fans in the audience today. He's got a bit of a following. People like the guy. I yeah. like him. Overall. And up at the top left part of the map is our player from the Team Slayers, our only Zerg of the group. He is. <laughs> it just, I just can't take that voice seriously anymore. Are you going to just imagine Kerrigan playing Yu-Gi-Oh? I know. She's you trap card. Trap card. <laughs> she picks it up. It's like playing the Pokemon card game with Kerrigan. I choose Lick It Up. <laughs> My favorite so Pokemon name. I just play that a lot. What's your favorite Pokemon, Wolf? My favorite Pokemon is Zubat. Zubat? Zubat why, is, why is that? Zubat's just so misunderstood, man. Oh, Everyone yeah? thinks he's just that annoying thing that you run into in the cave. Well, he is. And he uses Screech or whatever. And, like, yeah, you're, that's you're annoying. In confusion, your Pokemon becomes confused. You're like, I just want to get through this cave. Zubat, though, he just wants you to capture him. You know, he just wants to he get wants, out of that cave. He wants, he to, wants to, to get out of there, man. He doesn't have eyes, and that always freaked me out. I he uses donses echolocation, like big, man. He, when he evolves, he's just like a big toothy mouth. He evolves with the Golbat. He gets it's eyes, creepy. and if you take really good care of your Golbat, he'll become a Crobat. <laughs> Zubat true. is the best Pokemon, man. I don't know what else. I, I don't know well, how anyone else can say things differently. Lickitung is my favorite Pokemon name, but I like Oddish. It's my Oddish? favorite Pokemon because he's he just chills out, man. He doesn't like hit things or anything like that. He just like spreads his spores, like makes people go to sleep. He's just like the helpful Pokemon. He's a nice guy, man. I guess that is the case. Yeah. Well, Keen has done it again. He's taken one barracks with no gas and then added two gas simultaneously. In this case, making his command center after his gases. Oh. And uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! For hatchery first, by the looks of things, and is already mining from that base. Started two queens now. He's mining that gas. Now I'm wondering what getting your two gases right before the command center is going to do to the timings. Obviously it's going to make your tech come a little bit quicker, but I haven't seen too many players do that actually. I mean the common way to do things is to get your gases after the command center. Yeah, that's usually the way huh. you see it. Um, a lot of Terrans did that back in some of our open seasons, like open season 2. People are figuring it yeah. out. You go command center first, that is the gas at the same time. This is going to be a reactor thing. Hellion build. It's going to get the reactor Hellions out after the command center in this case. Yeah, like basically it just means you get your command center faster, I guess. Well, well no, actually, in this you case, get it yeah, slower. You get yeah, you slower get it because slower. you made the, the gases first. But no, you do get your Hellions it's faster, faster, though. The command center is faster than you would have it if you had made your reactor and your Hellions before the, you know, started the reactor before yeah. the command center. Oh, right, right. So I guess it's just like a very similar build. And we're going to see Mech play out of oh, Keen. He's now starting a second I know. factory. Yeah. Okay, I was wondering if he was going to do this. Yeah, he's putting down a second factory. That's why he got the gases first. He wanted enough. 
for two factories right away, that makes a lot yeah. more In sense. In this case, you get your Command Center first, but you can still put pressure on the Hellions, and you can go into mech play. And yeah, that's well, exactly why he's doing this. It's going to get a tech lab on that barracks now, and then switch it over, and yep. probably go Blue Flame and just pump out a ton of Hellions. Yep, there's a the tech lab on the barracks. There's no doubt in my mind that's what we're going to see. Yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! going for that very oh, it's good for new the quick common Roach Warren pressure. I, I like also this. getting a lair actually at the same time. It's gonna fall with Mutas most likely off of two base. I like this early Roach pressure that Zerg players have been doing because it, it does a good job of punishing all the Terrans who've been going Reactor and Hellion expand, which basically all Terrans are doing right now. Now, has he actually made any Roaches yet? I don't think he has. No, he has not. Okay, so he's gotten the Roach Warren maybe sort of as a defensive measure then. You see a lot of Zerg players making Roaches to attack with, right? but he's just making it defensively at the moment. Um, and certainly speed just finished. The Zerglings are going to uh -oh, come over here and look at that. sneak past that bunker. You're going to see everything in here. They do. Now he might start making some roaches. Now he knows what's going on. And uh, interestingly enough as well, uh, he's not making blue flame. Instead going after... Uh, I, I see what you're seeing. Instead of just going for tanks, there's a second roach warrant well, that just popped up. Um, actually, he cancels the other one apparently. Oh, he I did. I can't find those. I was say... Oh, I was wondering. Okay. That explains everything. All right. So a little bit of indecisiveness by Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, like we mentioned earlier, Cello uh, is kind of like, well, I don't know if he's ready to get into Code S. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't actually live at the Slayer's house, and he hasn't even been practicing with the team, actually. Cello is telling me that he's been practicing quite a bit with the NS Hozo team, actually. So he's got a lot of friends on that team. And so Cello is like, I don't really know, you know how he's been preparing for this. It's, I haven't talked to him in a while. Yeah, it's a little bit weird um, yeah. when you hear stories like that, but it's very common in Korea to practice with other teams, especially if you have a lot of friends on that team. Yeah. Five roaches are on the way. He's got two spines here. He's got that evolution chamber to help block as well. And with that spire coming along, he's going to be able to put on a little bit of pressure. Keen actually has not yet made an armory, so he cannot make any Thors. And he's going to do this push. He's going to want to hit before the spire is done. It's going to be pretty close. You know, the thing is, though, is if, if this push doesn't do some significant damage and the mutas come, when Keen doesn't have any anti-air, he could be in some serious yeah, trouble. Yeah, he doesn't so even Keen, have an engineering bay right now. Actually. Keen may not know it, but a lot is riding on this push. Yeah. This is a pretty common push. He knows he's going to yeah. hit this before the spire, at least that's what he's hoping for. And the mutas are actually going to start right at this moment. This is actually a, a push that's good and bad for that reason. A lot of gas is going to go into those mutas rather than roaches. And at the same time, actually, he's only going to make four here mutas go. here. Here we go. The tank siege up. The Hellion's doing a lot of extra damage here. There are only a total of five Marines with this push. Yeah, so the mutas that are coming out right now could easily kill those Marines. And once those Marines are dead, this push is over. So I think Yu-Gi-Oh! might take a little bit of damage here. But overall, he's going to be just fine because there's no armory, still no engineering bay on the way for uh, Keen. Yeah, and those mutas do come out here. Yep. The Evolution Chamber goes down. He's going to attack while the Broodlings are attacking the Marines. Smart choice by Yu-Gi-Oh! Very smart. And takes out all the Marines, and now this push has been thwarted. Even Zergling used to catch reinforcements. He's been catching oh. reinforcing tanks and Marines in the middle of the map. These Hellions do sneak into the main, though. And roasting a couple drones, but I don't think Yu-Gi-Oh! is going to take that much damage. Yeah, yeah those he did not get blue flame. You went for fast siege mode instead. I was, I was really surprised by that, honestly. I Normally, when you go too fast factories like that, it's because you're going to try to put on a lot of heavy Hellion pressure with blue flame. But Look Kena at this timing, man. That. Five turrets on the way right now as the Mutas come back. His wow. engineering bay finished just in time. He literally has no Marines back at home. He's got two Marines in a bunker. That's it. A third Marine just popping out of that barracks. Yeah, are so they going to get there gonna in be time? Up just in time. Wow. That's like... I was really worried that Keenan just kind of neglected to get any sort of anti-air defense, but that just actually worked out He's practiced perfectly. this timing quite a lot. This is a really popular timing with mech pushes and bio pushes for the mutas, because you normally, as a Zerg player, you save up a ton of gas. Ooh. Look at this Hellion sneaking in here again, going to kill some more drones. Three Hellions can target down drones so quickly. Yep. And Yu-Gi-Oh! losing some more here. Looks like the Queens and Link should be able to clean this up. Oh! A couple of drones taking some oh. hits. Okay, could have been worse. Could have been a lot worse. Right now, the worker count is 48 to 41. You can see 28 workers killed in total there. Stim and plus one weapons on the way. It looks like Keen is going into more bio play now. He's actually gone up to four barracks here, making a third command center. And we thought he was in a mech for sure, but looks like he just wanted to start things out with mech and he's going to switch into more bio oriented play. I really like that. You know, I don't know. Keen's playing very, very interestingly. He's doing a lot of things that 
well, certainly I'm not expecting, and that Yu-Gi-Oh! is definitely not expecting as well. You know, he showed Yu-Gi-Oh! the two factories, but like you said, he's adding out a bunch of barracks now. He's gonna well, switch things up. What happened with this push from Keen is if the timing had been just a little bit better, it would have been much, you know, much better of a push. And on a map that's not Taldarim Altar, or not cross positions Taldarim Altar, that push uh -huh. could have actually ended the game. And similarly, though, because uh, this is Tall Dream Altar, it took the Muse a long time to get over here as well. It gave them time to get those turrets up, so it was kind of a... The map just kind of changed the game for yeah, those push Yeah, good and bad for him. Yeah, for both players, really. Yeah. I suppose it's good, you know? Yeah. If it's good and bad, that's... I think that's what they call balanced. That I don't want to start that thread, though. Well, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! is going to catch some of these Marines over here, which are actually targeting down the rocks. He may be able to get some free hits in. Besides oh. not to. It's always really lucky when you can catch units attacking rocks because yeah. they're targeting those and not your units. And he does see it. He's going to go for it. Really smart by Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, and now right he actually can clean up all these Marines. Wow. Oh. That was a beautiful surgical Got to be so strike. careful when you attack rocks, man, man. Or that can happen to you. Absolutely. He just lost about a dozen Marines there. That takes a little while to replace. Yeah, quite a while. Yu-Gi-Oh has a third base finishing right now. His worker count is actually caught up. He's 58 to 55 right now. In fact, 61 with a mm. few more drones popping. He's got Baneling speed on the way. Plus one Carapace getting a few more Mutas. His Mutalist count now is up to 18. Does have plus one for those Mutas as well. Doing a little bit of extra damage. Yep. The Armory is just finishing for Keen. So he's probably going to start a few Thors. He's got a lot of minerals stacked up there and a lot of gas. He's probably going to make two Thors here as he continues Marine production. Now, oh, the nice thing for Yu-Gi-Oh! is that he get really keep Keen in his base. You know, he's going to make it very difficult for Keen to ever think about taking a third. At least not until the Thors come out. We can see two on the way there. But, you know, he's just going to harass quite a bit. Look at this. Cleaning up these oh, Marines man. because he knows he has the better numbers here. And that command center is suddenly in huge trouble. And then Yu-Gi-Oh! is actually playing this really smartly. Oh, I think he's outplaying Keen here so well. Yeah, he is at the moment. It's going to be a different story when those Thors come out. That's kind of the thing. Yeah, those Thors are going to stop the harassment, but it will allow Yu-Gi-Oh to take a fourth base. When the Thors start pushing out on the map, he's going to know about it. He's got all four watchtowers right now, and every time those Thors move out, he's going to see them. He's going to run back to the base, harass, buy himself time. I'm really surprised, in fact, he hasn't taken a fourth base. He is, though, taking a macro hatchery, something that a lot of Zergs do not do, but it's becoming almost the norm now. It's almost impossible to see game. Yeah, if you're on three bases, you can really only spend your money effectively if you're macroing correctly with the macro hatch as well. So, yeah, nearly all Zergs. Yeah, he's going to go for these Marines again, maybe. Oh, Ooh, taking a hit whoops. from the Thor, decides to get out of there. Yeah, they get from that Thor, actually. Start stop microing on those rocks, taking them out. Yeah. Hey, man, those rocks are dangerous. you got to micro your heart out against them. Well, he was doing it, of course, just in case the Muse decided to come back while he was targeting them again. Yeah. Hive going down, as well as Pathogen Glands, plus one Carapace for Flyers, and plus two Ground Carapace. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you can get the jump on your Terran opponent with those Broodlords, you can do okay. I mean, he's going to try to go and Fester Broodlord, fairly common, but he's doing it a little bit quicker than most Zergs would yeah. in this case, so he's trying to catch Keen unawares, you know, before he has any Vikings out or anything like that. Well, here comes a huge Muta flyby coming in here, taking out the turret. Going to get some medivacs that are popping out. Uh -oh. But the Muta is getting caught by some Marines here, not what he wants to have happen. Yeah, he's got to be a little bit careful with those Mutas. Some of those are starting to get pretty low health. That is a big that scary is a push. scary push, man. Right now, Keen is actually up 20 supply. I was just looking at that. I was like, you know, that looks like a pretty big food army. And yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh, I think, made too many Mutas. Didn't use them as well as he could have. And now is kind of stuck in a position where he's going to try to use his Mutas to turn Keen around. But Keen is not going to turn around, man. Look at this. Stimming his Marines and his main to chase his Mutas away. Yep. And that's not going to help, letting a few of your units run out like that, because all the tanks, oh, they're not on siege, but he's still going to lose everything. Some banelings wasted on those siege tanks yeah, there. Yeah, not good to see those banelings used in such a way. Yep. He's going to actually start elevating some units up here. These investors have enough energy for Bungle gets all those Marines. Wow. Huge. Bungles them again. They'll all die. Oh. There's a couple of them. A few of those not Bungle twice. Yep. Uh, now, meanwhile, the Mutas have been long since chased out by Keen. He's going to use them to clean up these greens here. The Baneling Nest goes down. He's already remade it. Greater Spire is on the way as well as seven Corruptors right now. Like I yeah. said yesterday, seven seems to the magic number with Corruptors, man. 
Well, he's trying to get those Broodlords out still because that's one of the few things that could kind of keep him in the game. He's going to try to magic box these stores, but there are a lot of Marines here. I think oh. this is a huge mistake by Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh is just in a position right now. It's going to be, oh man, taking so many hits from the Thors. Just, he's just in a position right now where it's going to be really tough to engage that army. And if he doesn't, you know, at the very least, he's going to lose his natural. Oh, the Mutas are almost dead now. This game is starting to look like it might be a, a win for Keen pretty soon here. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh is starting to fall apart. He got a fourth base. It's at 9 o'clock position on the map. But fortunately, it's just not accessible really for him right now. He can try to sneak some drones over there. But all it's going to take is five Marines from Keen to clean it up. A huge Zergling force going over there. It's going to go for this flank. Or but the you know, counterattack. Or, or he might be cutting off reinforcements. He's going to cut off well, reinforcements, I think, and then go for a flank. But even so, it's just so no. many units. He can't even kill the reinforcements. I think the reinforcements alone, man, are just. Yeah, I think you're right. The he's desperate to go for it. It's, it's not going to work. Yep. He's a desperate, man. He wants to do everything he can to win this game. But it's going to be too little too late. Yeah, I mean, he can camp the production facilities, but look at that. Almost everything getting roasted by the tanks right away. In the meantime, everything of Yu-Gi-Oh is getting taken down. Oh, but there are Broodlords there. The Broodlords are going to try their best, but with scans here and the amount of Marines he has. Whoa, nice pick up there to avoid those Banelings. Yeah. He has so many Marines, he's going to drop on the other side, and the Broodlords will have nowhere to run. The Banelings not even coming in to help them. Yeah, it's not looking good. Nice fumble, though some of those Marines, and looks like he actually will keep these Broodlords alive for a little while. Yeah. And in fact, uh, these Thor. Broodlords are actually starting to clean up this mech army with some infested Terrans helping out. It's got to be embarrassing for the Thor to be picked up by the medevac, blown away from the battle. Look at this man, he's cleaning up some of these tanks. Yu-Gi-Oh actually may be able to recover from this. His drones somehow sneak out as well. Well, I mean, without Vikings, it's really difficult to deal with those Broodlords. He had them in a great position over that gap between the main and the natural when Keen moved in a little bit farther and he took down that attack pretty easily. And now there is a third base up for Yu-Gi-Oh. His natural is completely destroyed. He's going to remake it immediately. But what I'm worried about for Yu-Gi-Oh is the next push, the next wave. And he's actually sending a somewhat small force across the middle of the map. Yeah, I kind of question the wisdom of, of this a little bit because that's not really enough Marines and uh, Thors and things to handle those Broodlords that Yu-Gi-Oh has right now. Now, I'd like to see him wait until that base at the 9 o'clock that he's just landed. He moved his main command center to the 9 o'clock base. I'd like to see him yeah. get that saturated, drop a lot of mules there, get a larger force, and then attack. He is getting a Ghost Academy. He's got some Vikings out to help deal with those Broodlords. The Ghosts, of course, can snipe the Broodlords, but also, more importantly, can EMP the Infestors. Exactly. Yeah, he's making Vikings to try to handle the Broodlords, so the Ghosts will probably just be the, for the Infestors. Look at this, man, this Lost Temple-esque tank drop over there. All we need is the Thor. <laughs> Oh, but the Broodlords are going to take care of that pretty yeah, easily. The Broodlords do clean it, up that tank drop. Mobius reactor. Get research. Always makes me think of Morpheus. <laughs> oh, wow. Getting so many Marines Man. here. That's huge for Yu-Gi-Oh. He needs little things like this to get back in this game. But Keen still with a 20 supply lead. Looks like he's not going to be able to mine from that natural for very long, if at all. Catching some of these Vikings, though. Yeah, not quite enough Corruptors to go head-to-head -head with the Vikings, but... Between that and the few infested Terrans, Yuki will be able to keep them alive at least. And here come the Broodlords again, but there are four Vikings there. Yeah, he's going to have to be careful of those Vikings, though. A lot of infested Terrans being dropped. Uh, and the siege tanks, though, may clean up the majority of them. He's just going to have to pull back for a second, then kite the Broodlords. Kite, I guess you could say kite the infested Terrans and the Broodlords. I guess. I mean, I don't know how... It's a complicated dance, man. I feel like he could have gotten a good fungal off on those Vikings. They were all clumped up. It would have been a good opportunity. But, on the other hand, the Siege Tanks could have killed all the Infestors during that moment if he got too close to the Vikings. So oh, that's a good point as well. Yeah, I think that was his rationale there. But either way, it's very difficult to use. Uh-oh, the, the Infestors decide they want to uh, try to get some fungals now, taking a lot of hits from those Siege Tanks. Only one Broodlord left. Yeah, last Broodlord. Another one pops. So despite a nice little sort of hold from Yu-Gi-Oh, it looks like Keen is still in a good position to take this game. He has taken his fourth base, producing seven Marines at a time, getting lots of Vikings out. I think he knows, yeah. yeah all of the oh, Vikings no. get fumbled there, as well as these the Marines, and over here on the other side, wow. But Those Marines the were taken over to clean up that base that was attacked by the siege tanks earlier, yep. and uh, at the natural, the push looks like it's been mostly thwarted. He's killing the Vikings now with a fungal, but 
Keen is still up 50 supply, and he was able to resecure that fourth base. Whereas now Yu-Gi-Oh is mining from a natural that's almost mined out, and his third base, which yeah. is way oversaturated on. Oh, look at this! Ten mutas on the way for Yu-Gi-Oh, so he's going to try to go back in the sort of muta harassment style. He's got enough professors out where if he keeps them alive, that's really all he needs. Yeah, and in fact, the Marine Town's oh. really low right now. Mutas do quite well against Vikings unless they fight them like this, where they're not all together. Yeah. And some Marines coming in to help out as well, and yeah. I think this might be the end for Yu-Gi-Oh! That's just way too many reinforcing Marines. He just had so good production for so long. GG. GG. So Keen brings it back to 1-1. One, one. He is not quite dead yet. Not quite, man. Yu-Gi-Oh! goes down 0-1 in our group. And Keen, obviously, actually he's a, yeah, he's 1-1, but he doesn't look too happy with himself after that game, too. It was, it was a bit of a, sort of a drag out, sort of a sloppy fisticuffs type game. Too, yeah. I mean, it's, it's that, that is the type of game where after you're done playing, you're like, oh, that was just, that just didn't feel good. Well, yeah, you feel like, oh, that was kind of a, a close call. Yeah. There were several times in that game where I felt like I wasn't playing very well. Like, I felt like I made a lot of mistakes when my opponent didn't quite capitalize on it. Yeah. Like, I had my five missile turrets up just in time for those mutas. And my push that I attacked with, I killed a lot of drones, but I would have liked to have done more. Um, and at cross positions, you know, like I said, it's very difficult to make that push work. Mm -hmm. It's such a common push. Your opponent, if you're going bio, is going to be trying to make banelings, or if you're going for that mech type of play, is going to be trying to make roaches. But if he doesn't know you're pushing... Then, you know, he's going to wait and he's going to make eight mutas. And then it's like 800 gas is gone and those mutas are not very strong fighting it. So it's like, uh-oh. Yeah. But in this case, he made only four and he held the attack fairly well. Lost a lot of drones because the Hellions there were just so many they ran by. And uh, after the mutas came in, he just had those missile turrets up just in time. I mean, to the second. Well, with the way that Keen has been playing too, and, and Yu-Gi-Oh played in that game, I, I've got a feeling we're going to see those guys kind of stay in good. I think we're going to see Keen go down. Um, I've kind of been, you know, even though we won that game, just looking at that and then looking at the other play we've seen already today, I'm starting to sort of form some opinions about how this group is going to turn out. Yeah, I would we'll I would see agree. if I'm right, but... Um, I think Keen, yeah. he's he's one of those guys where he plays inconsistently. Yeah. I mean, I've said this a few times, he just plays kind of inconsistently. Um, he shows awesome games one day, the next day just does not. Well, all right, well, the Sith Lord meets the man behind the curtain here. It's like, this is the blood of your teammates. Actually, that's in an orange juice bottle, isn't it? Yeah, he's put tomato juice in an orange juice See? bottle. See? It's actually blood. You don't just put orange juice randomly in other bottles, man. <laughs> you just buy a bottle of orange juice. All right, now I'm scared. He likes orange juice and blood, That's so it's just convenient for him. Ugh. I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like trying to imagine how that would taste. No, I just mean he drinks really the orange. likes to drink orange juice, but he has oh, a lot of okay. bottles. I thought you meant so like mixed together. No, he just uses the bottles to store it. You're just weird, Wolf. <laughs> Let's move into the game here. PvP action here at the GSL up and down.